Welcome back everybody, this is Steve and today we're going to play around with this Compact Presario 524 CDS machine. This machine was sent in by Mr. Beer Snack. Dan, thank you very much for sending this in and we've been having a lot of fun with it and there's still a lot more fun to come. What we're going to do today with this thing is get it cleaned up because it's pretty scuzzy looking. Um, let's take a look at what's inside, what kind of ports it has on it and then figure out how to install better Windows 3.x drivers so we can do some video capture for some future videos. We're going to do a couple more deep dives into what's on this machine and some of the capabilities that it has and do some benchmarking and stuff in a later video. Make sure you're subscribed down below and ring that bell so that you get notified when new videos come out. Stick around. All right, back over on the bench, we got the motherboard out of the machine. It's actually ridiculously easy on this machine. And uh, there are two thumb screws. I needed to use a little bit of mechanical force to, to break them loose. And then once you do that, there is a nice handle right here to pull it out. So we look at the back side of this, and what we have is keyboard port, mouse port, game port, parallel printer port, serial port, and we've got four different audio ports, uh, microphone, headphone, and then line in, line out, and then we actually have, over here all the way on the side, a dial-up modem. So if we look inside of the machine, there's a little bit of stuff that's going on inside here as well. Over here is your 486 processor. You've got two different uh, sticks of RAM, 72 pin SIMs here. One is PNY branded, and the other one is the original Compact brand. And then this looks like some MT memory right here on the board. Uh, VLSI chipset, Sirius Logic CLGD5424 for the graphics card. Um, we've got a coin cell battery, which is good. That looks to be in pretty good repair. I don't know if it's holding the charge yet or not. Over here, we have the ESS audio drive, which is going to handle the sound card and probably handle the modem functions. There's a transformer here that probably goes for the modem also. And then this here says it is a Visa connector. However, the interface between this and all of the stuff that's on the all-in-one machine is actually this little edge connector right here, and there's a corresponding connector that this slides into inside. And that is your IDE controller, uh, your floppy controller, your video connection, and your user interface stuff like your power switch and other things like that. That's what the, uh, what the inside looks like. All right, I don't have one of those fancy cameras that will lock into the refresh rate on the screen, but I wanted to give you guys a peek at this thing booting up and then hopefully we'll be able to switch over to a video capture and see what we can do with that. Sixteen megabytes of RAM. This thing ought to be a screamer. Very loud. So the battery appears to be dead. All right, following configuration options are automatically updated. It figured out the disk drive type, figured out the right amount of memory, figured out what kind of disk drives there were, and then we want to go ahead and save those changes. And of course it has to reboot for that. Compact's always had that double beep sound when they came on, starting MS-DOS. That double beep sound always made me think there was something wrong with them, but that's just the way they are. Plug and play configuration, missing volume control, ET API CD-ROM drive. Ooh, Windows 3.1, Compact Edition. And it's missing the Plus Tech Scanner conf uh, driver. So, I don't have a plus tech scanner, so we can figure out a way to remove that. 
Oh, the tartan. Love the tartan. That hourglass is your friend. Can't find Lodi box specified in Win Any. And we are in to Windows 3.1. Special happen when we exit Windows? Nope, just get a C drive prompt. And a whole bunch of check disk files. All right, let's uh, see if we can configure this a little bit differently and get some better views on it. Hang on. All right, I've got us all set up on video capture mode right now. And what that means for this machine, because it has a built-in screen, is that I needed to install a VGA card in it so I could get a VGA port out on the backside of the machine. In order to do that, on an ISA machine, ISA bus machine, it's fairly easy. If there's an inbuilt uh, VGA card, you can usually just plug a ISA VGA card in and that will just take precedence and work for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the machine on and boot it up and see if that worked or not. Looking good so far, there's the Trident. Skip the RAM test. This thing's still complaining about BIOS options not being saved. That's because I haven't replaced the battery that's in the machine. I recommend if you're gonna be very infrequently using retro computers that you remove the batteries and definitely remove them if you're going to be putting them in some kind of long-term storage situation. Let's save the changes. There's a mouse driver, looks like two mouse drivers. Three mouse drivers, did we see three mouse drivers go by? Let's try in Windows 3.1, that's a good sign. No plus text scanner installed still. And then it had an error loading the 256.1024.drv file. That is probably the driver, well, it's guaranteed to be the driver for the built-in Cirrus Logic GLD, uh, what is that, 5424 or whatever it is but obviously that's not gonna work with the Trident card. So what I did was I went out to WinWorld PC and or archive.org and downloaded a bunch of drivers for Trident. Um, if you have a location other than those two, which are gonna be linked in the description down below, where you get Windows 3.x drivers, I would love to hear about it in a comment. So let's see what we can do about getting those drivers loaded. All right, so in order to change drivers for Windows 3.x, you need to change into whatever folder you installed Windows in. More often than not, that is just going to be CD backslash Windows on your C drive. And now that we're in the Windows folder, you wanna run setup by typing setup and pressing enter. That will bring up the setup program and there it is. The display is the compact CL5424 at 800 by 600 resolution with 256 colors. Press enter on that and we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom. And it says other requires disk provided by a hardware manufacturer. So we'll press enter there. We'll type in the path to where I downloaded the drivers off of the website. And we got a couple of different choices here. It looks like this Trident card can support 640 by 480 up to 64,000 colors. Oh, up to 16 million colors, 16 MC million colors. Or 800 by 600 up to 65,000 colors. Or 1024 by 768 with different colors and different font sizes. So my only choices here would be the, oh, 1280 by 1024, nice. But there's not a non-large font choice. Okay, let's get, let's try the, let's, let's go for broke. Let's do 1280 by 1024, 16 colors, large font. Except the configuration is shown above. It's copy and files, copying files slowly. That appears to have worked. Let's try it out. 
It either worked or it crashed. All right, we're still complaining about the plus tech, no problem. I bet it can be seen, but I can't see it on my capture card. Nice. All right, here we go. I had to go back and run setup again and pick the 1024 by 768 version, but we've got the tartan back. We're making some progress. Ta-da. All right, there's the old loady blocks, loady box error. And there you have it. That's how you change uh, video drivers for Windows 3.x. All right, some bonus footage here. Let's see about that uh, three mouse drivers thing. File, exit windows. Ooh, chimes. All right, we're in the root directory of the C drive. Let's run C colon slash tools slash, oh no, let's run DOS editor, because we can. Edit auto exec dot bat. All right, so there's mouse driver number one. Path equals C colon mouse, C colon mouse slash win three one. Ugh. AD wrap, but we're not gonna tell anybody about that. That looks like after dark that'll be fun to play with after dark for dos so that's the screensaver this one's remarked out commented out huh. so they commented out ah okay they were doing some memory optimization they commented out share and then they put share back in without memory optimization but this machine has no networking devices on it so i don't know why we're doing sharing. Maybe there's a Windows thing that they were doing with it. Then we set the path, info center, viewer, compact DOS, DOS, Windows, mouse, Windows, CPQ win. L mouse, C colon backslash mouse, MSCD, EXE, smart drive, and then load high, C colon slash mouse slash mouse. Okay, so it's loading the same mouse driver, but it's loading it twice. It's not three times, but I did see mouse three times pop up on the screen with this set command. So, interesting there. Looks like they tried to run MemMaker in order to get better memory management. And... Kind of, that is kind of what it is. Excellent. Let's get out of this. And what we'll do is we will come back and explore this machine a little bit more in a future video. If you would like to see this machine explored in a future video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and check out other videos over here on the side that might interest you. Thanks for being awesome.